Yeah. At least you know it. At least, at least you got it. Yeah. <laughs> I know where the cutoff is. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Amen. Today is your lucky day. We're having a nice dinner. Awesome. Take it the right day. My friend bought it. Hey, man. Oh, Daniel for fans. So he bought it. Yeah. And I had no idea. Hey, well. He's jammed all the time. No, I haven't had any issues out of it. I've been looking at getting a heavy barrel for it, though. I love I shot a couple of them and have that heavy barrel stand. There's just no rise. All right, we're going to forego the riddle this morning. Uh, we'll we'll, 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 we'll go on. that one this week. Uh, I thought it went fairly well last week. Everybody seemed to enjoy it. For the most part, I gotta tighten that up. Oh, we didn't use it. Then what? Y'all didn't, didn't use it? Use I didn't use it. it. I guess I need to tighten it up. <laughs> All right, prayer requests. Let's remember uh, just a couple real quick. Uh, do remember to pray for those that will be traveling this week. I know we'll be going Wednesday. Um, and some others will be traveling in and out, uh, family for Thanksgiving. So we're looking forward to uh, being with family. But we pray that everybody be safe. Our, our Wednesday night service, we are moving to Tuesday night uh, for th this week only. So uh, let's do remember that. But that's just for, for those that will be traveling and, and preparing for Thanksgiving. So do remember all that. Also do remember Ms. Glenda Parker. She had a PET scan Thursday. I have not heard what the results of that the outcome of that is just yet, but please do remember, remember her and your prayers. I know she would appreciate that. Do we have any other prayer requests? Yes, ma'am. My husband will be traveling home later tonight, taking her and I back to California. Ooh. And my daughter just arrived yesterday at 8 o'clock last night and surprised me. Oh. Yay! Oh. <laughs> Good surprise. <laughs> yeah, she told me yesterday morning that she was coming, and I'm like, oh, it's gonna yeah. happen. And now I gotta do stuff in the apartment I went planning on, and I'm getting bus time. All right, hey, did you, did you check and see if that looks like okay. All right, uh, I moved the, the thing so I don't end up and trying to get all the things together. so. No, the uh, other thing. Yeah, the other thing. I, I, I thought you would get that. All right, any other prayer requests? Yes, sir. One of the uh, managers that I, at the apartments that I, we maintain, uh, her and her husband, they both live at that, those apartment complex still. Oh, there it goes. Oh, there goes. There wasn't nothing inappropriate. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't read it. Y'all don't watch that. <laughs> don't pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. It'll be all right. <laughs> Oh, uh, yes. I had one. A uh, lady at work uh, had her foot operated on. She's our office manager, and a lot rides on her. She's going to be out several days, so just pray for everything at work. Everything at work. Smooth. Okay. Anyone else? Good to have our visitors with us today. I chose the right day. Yeah. <laughs> it'll, it'll be wafting in here in a little bit. It'll, it'll be all right. Preach fast. Yeah, preach fast. The door's closed. <laughs> all right. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Uh, then we'll jump right into our lessons. Now, Father, we're thankful for the day. What a joy it's been already to, to have fellowship with your people. I pray that you'll help us as we uh, pray for these individuals the vast interest in our prayers. Father, we do pray for the office manager. Uh, Brother McCoy, I pray uh, at work. I pray that you just continue to have your hand on him. This couple that Brother Tony mentioned that, that's lost their job, I pray that you'll have your hand on them as well. Brother John, as he travels tonight, uh, to, to keep him safe. Father, I pray for Miss Glenda that you just continue to have your hand on her. Uh, all those that will be traveling as well, and other others that, that, that in our uh, fellowship that need our prayers, I pray that you just continue to be with them. Be with the Sunday school lesson today. Uh, help us as we study. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, there's coffee. If you'd like some, just make your way over there. If you're sitting on the inside and, you, inside and you'd like some, uh, just kind of maybe you could uh, ask somebody on the outside of the road to grab you a cup. I'm sure they would not mind doing that. All right. I do want to say with a lady, happy birthday to Miss Christie. 
uh, her birthday was this week. And uh, if I miss your birthday, I'm sorry. I apologize. If I miss hers, I'm in bad trouble. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> Throwing that out there. All right. Uh, we're going to continue with this idea of putting pieces of the puzzle together. Uh, just being honest. All right. Uh, so last week we, we continued with the idea of uh, the study of, uh, of God. Remember we started with our, our timeline uh, in the first monument. And I'm, I'm just trying to do this to, to get us going where, where late as it is. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, uh, verse 15 is our, our text verse that we've been using to get our study started. Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And we're taking all of these things, putting them together, that we might get a working knowledge of the scripture. So we're going to jump uh, into the last section. Hopefully, I want to get through this and angels today. So uh, we'll see how that goes. But So we're going to jump into the uh, third section uh, of the idea of God. We've, we've gone through uh, the nature of God. We've gone through the names of God. Uh, now we're going to pick up here with the last part, the attributes. And again, we're going to cover this fairly quickly because we've already done a lot of this uh, in our regular preaching services. Uh, mentioned, uh, I, mentioned, I think it was Brother Bruce, he and I were out yesterday uh, knocking on doors, and, and I, I think it was, I don't remember. Uh, yeah, well, I think it was. <coughs> it, it's, hard for, it's hard for me to, to, to remember exactly when I covered what. And, and so if, if I mention something, it, it's going to be in one of the three services during the week that we cover, three or four, four times Sunday school. Uh, so you need to come to all four to get the whole picture because because <laughs> they all cross over. Uh, so that's just, uh, by the way, that's just an advertisement for, 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 for coming Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night as well. All right. Uh, so we did this with the attributes uh, already. So we're going to do it very quickly. Notes. Uh, I think we're still working on the same. I don't know if I have any more. Yeah. Full sets. I don't think I do. Do you want the second page? Is that what you want to do? Uh, is that going to be the second page? Mm -hmm. I mean, when you go make some copies. It's the second and third page. He's hoping to get to the third page. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Yeah. 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 Of course, that's all the first page. You want me to make a yes, if you don't mind. If you don't mind. It's I've got the a bottom half of the second page. Bottom half of the second page. That's what I mean. All right, so we start talking looking about the attributes of God. Remember, we're talking about breaking the Bible down into bite-sized pieces. Mm -hmm. And uh, we started talking about God. God's from everlasting to everlasting, so there's no beginning, no ending with God. So the best, best place to start is with God. Remember, we started the, the very first verse we looked at once we started talking about God was in the beginning. God, and just that simple statement uh, that God is in the beginning. Which one? Doesn't matter. Pick one, He's there. All right, so we start off with God. We talked about His nature. Uh, we talked about His names and how He revealed Himself to us. Now we're going to start talking about some of His attributes. Uh, the first one we need to realize is that He is self existing, and that's, that's eternal, uh, everlasting to everlasting. Self existing. The verse is Exodus chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. God said to Moses, I am that I am. Can, I, can we connect? To, uh, I didn't look up the verse, but can we connect to the New Testament, uh, this, this verse of Scripture? When they came to arrest Jesus in the garden, and the mob meets him there in Gethsemane. And I'm not going to get this exactly right. I'm just going to quote it instead of quote it. But uh, he gets there, uh, and the mob finds him, and Jesus asked him, Whom seek ye? And they respond, Jesus of Nazareth. And his response to them is, I am. That's what he says to them. He responds just the way God talked to Moses in the Old Testament when God said uh, unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. <clears throat> Jesus responded to them the same way. I am. And when we look at God... We understand he's self-existing. He is the I am. He always has been. He always will be. He needs nothing else to complete him. He is self-existing. All right? Uh, also, we'll find that he is self-sufficient. He is self-sufficient. You realize we need him. He doesn't need us. Now, he created us for fellowship, and he created us that we might worship him, 
But re remember, there came a point in time where mankind corrupted themselves and God did what? God sent a flood and destroyed all of them. He didn't need them. They needed him. Right? He is self-sufficient. Psalm 50, uh, verse 10 through 12 deals with that. For every beast of the forest is mine. Cattle upon a thousand hills. I know all the, fowl, uh, the fowls of the mountains. The wild beast of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell thee. For the world is mine, the fullness thereof. So he just states very clearly he is self-sufficient. Number three, he is eternal. He is eternal. Now this is, I know, elementary. I understand that. Uh, we've already talked about him being everlasting, everlasting. No beginning, no end. He is God. I am Alpha and Omega, Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. The beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is, which was, which is to come, the Almighty. Pause for emphasis. Which is the Almighty, which was the Almighty, and which is to come, the Almighty. We serve an everlasting, eternal God. He's omnipresent. Uh, that means he's everywhere. We cannot go anywhere to get away from God. God is always there. Uh, he is always present. He is infinite in relation to space. Right? The, he, he permeates everything. I don't understand everything about the verse of Scripture I'm fixing to read to you. All I know is it's in the Bible, and therefore I believe it's true. All right? Look at what it says. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. I don't understand that statement, but it's in the Bible. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy, thy hand lead me, thy right hand shall uphold me. I'll, I'll just quote Pastor Dan Carr from, from South Mississippi. He'd say this, I'm not sure what that verse means, but it means something. Amen. We'll just keep praying and keep searching and one day maybe the Lord will reveal it to me. All right? Uh, but he is omnipresent. The next one is he's omnipotent. Means he's all powerful. He's all powerful. Boy, it, this, this deals with, with infinity in relation to energy. We talked about infinity in relation to space. This is in relation to energy. There is nothing that he cannot do. Now, there are things that he chooses not to do. That, that's why when we start talking about that fact about, you, you don't shout down here for a minute, when we talk about uh, uh, put, putting our sins as far as the east is from the west to be remembered no more, it's not that he can't remember them. It's that as a holy, righteous God, he chooses not to remember them. Amen. You know, we, we forget things, uh, I forget things quite often. He, he never forgets anything unless he chooses not to remember. That, that, ought, that ought to excite us just a little bit because God says our forgiven sin, He chooses not to remember. All right. <laughs> All right. I say, I'm going to go, go to preaching every minute. All right. If you need a copy of the notes, ready, ready, I, I, I made a couple of them. All right. Is anything too hard for the Lord? It's Genesis 18, 14. Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Now, what's the significance uh, of, of verse eighteen, of, of verse fourteen in Genesis eighteen? How old was Sarah? Yeah, ninety years old. You've been have a young. You know, I don't know there's anybody in here going to line up for that for that job. But uh, you, you know that that was going to that was that that, that job stayed vacant right there. Ninety years old. Sarah laughed. I mean, she did. She thought, yeah, right. You know, I'm past the years of childbearing, past the age of all that stuff. And, and God said, yeah, is there anything too hard for the Lord? And guess what happened? Yeah, exactly. All right. Then we talk about his omniscience, knowing all things. God is omniscient. If we could get a hold of these three omnis, uh, it would change the way we, we look at God. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. We cannot get away from him. He is omnipotent. He's all-powerful. There's nothing he cannot do. He is omniscient. Uh, that's his deals with, with infinity in relation to intelligence. He knows everything, all right? Uh, not just from the idea of calculus and, and, and trigonometry, uh, but, but he knows every minute detail of our life. You, you, realize, you realize that nothing, nothing, uh, was it, has it ever occurred to you that nothing has ever occurred to God? I never woke up one morning and went, oh, wow. Never thought about that before. 
<laughs> it's like, maybe, oh, not correct. But hey, right. Proverbs 15, verse 3, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. He knows everything there is to know. So as we start getting an understanding about who God is and what God's doing, uh, then, then we start understanding that, that relationship. It, when, when we understand who God is, that He's omnipresent, He's omnipotent, He's uh, uh, um, uh, what was the last one we just talked about? Uh, omniscient. <laughs> when we start talking about those, no one say I can't remember that. We start understanding who He is, then we go back to the names of God and we remember that He wants to have a relationship with us, especially on God. Uh, there, the, the, what do you say in the book of John? If, if everything that, that even Christ did while He was on earth were written in, in books the skies couldn't contain, the, the earth could I mean, just there, there's no way you could contain everything there is about God. That gives us a kind of a working understanding, all right? So we're going to move into this idea of angels. That's the next monument in our age that we're looking at. We're looking at the pre-Adamic age, before Adam. So we talked about God first. He's before everything. Now we'll talk about the angels a little bit. And there are some things here that I still don't, I don't understand. I don't get it. Uh, but we'll just we'll look at what we know and we'll trust God for the rest. Can we agree to do that? Yep. All right. All right. Now I, let, me, let me preface this by saying this. I do believe that angels are, are still working today. Uh, I do believe, I do believe that there are some folks that have that have entertained angels unaware. Uh, that's what the Bible says. I can tell you stories uh, that, that, that you would think I was lying to you. Uh, not that it happened to me personally, but from folks that I believe, that, that I know that I know personally, that I believe with all of my heart, at least they're telling what they believe to be true uh, and, and, and what happened specifically to them. Can I give you one very quickly? Very quick. All right. Real quick. Real quick. A friend of ours, Brother Bill Sheffield, uh, was a missionary in Bolivia. And he was in Bolivia, and while he was in Bolivia, the, the, every time the government changed hands in Bolivia, which was quite often, all the missionaries had to leave because normally what would happen when a, a government changed hands in Bolivia, uh, the, the, the government that took over would normally come in and kill all the missionaries because they were afraid that they would be sympathetic with the former government. So they, they literally would. They, they would start killing missionaries. So they, all the missionaries got smart enough to figure this out. When governments change hands, you leave, you know, and, and then as they let you back in, then, you know, you can come back. Well, there, there happened to be a change in hands, and, and Bill uh, knew it was possible. He didn't know what exactly happened, and, and he didn't leave the country. He was still there. Uh, and he was, long story, but he was up on, working on the, the roof of the church building one evening. And it was almost time for, for him to quit, almost dark. I was about ready to come down. He was trying to get, he said, I don't know what to do. I'm on the roof, and I knew I should have been there this late. I knew, you know, but I, I was trying to do. Anyway, he said, I didn't know what else to do. He said, I just started praying. And he said, the verse that came to my mind was, you know, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or seed begging bread. He said, I'm going to start crying. He said, I just started praying. He said, I had to go home. I had to do something. Couldn't stay on the roof all night. He said, so I got to the ladder, and I started down the ladder. I just began, just praying, God, I need your protection. And he said, I walked, got down to the end of the ladder, and he said, the guys surrounded him, all stood there, and they were telling him exactly what they were planning on doing to him. And he said, I just started walking toward the house. I got to the edge of the, the, the ring of men. He said, they opened up, and I walked through, and he, he said, they followed me all the way home. And just hollered at me, telling me what they were going to kill me, and all these things were going on. He said, I got home, got in the house, locked the door, they stayed outside for a while. I don't know, remember exactly how long he said. And finally they dispersed and, and, and went their separate ways. Well, thank the Lord. He was praising the Lord over that. He said, a couple of weeks later, he's back at the church. Uh, and a gentleman comes up to the, to the church and says, uh, Preacher, I need to talk to you for a second. The preacher says, okay. He said, uh, you know who I am? Brother Bill said, no, I don't know that I... I said, your face looks familiar, but I don't think I've, we've met. I don't think I've... He said, oh, we've met. I, you know, I don't know who you are. He said, I, I was the ringleader of that group of men that came a couple of weeks ago. Bill said, I'm starting to look for the door. You know, he can't finish the job, you know. He said, I need to ask you a question. Bill said, no, wait a minute. Before you ask me a question, i got to ask you a question. He said, okay. He said, why didn't y'all do what you said you were going to do? And I said, what are you talking about, preacher? He said, it was just me and y'all. He said, well, why didn't you? He said, preacher, 
What do you mean it was just us, us and you? See, why didn't you do anything? It was just me and y'all had y'all. I mean, he said, no, 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 preacher. He said, that's why I'm here. Now the preacher, now, now Brother Bill said, what are, you, what are you talking about? He said, I want to know who those two guys were that were with you. Bill said, excuse me? He said, when you came down off that roof, we intended to, to kill you. We, we, we intended full well to do that. But when you came down off that roof, you had two of the biggest guys I have ever seen in my life with you. And both of them had swords. And we followed you all the way home. And they stayed between me, us and you all the way to the house. And when we got to your house, they stood at your doors until we left. I want to know who those guys were. Now, you can think what you want to about that story. I happen to know Brother Bill Sheffield very well. Matter of fact, his daddy, I, uh, I swear to preach under his daddy. And I worked with his brother for four and a half years as a youth pastor. I don't think Brother Bill Sheffield would lie with knowingly. All he knows is what those gentlemen told him, and he had opportunity to lead that whole group to the Lord. Mm -hmm. I, I don't understand all there is to know about angels. I don't understand all there is to know about what they're doing today, but I know what the Bible, I know there's some things the Bible teaches about. So let's jump in there and let's look at it real quick. The definition of, the, uh, of, a, of an angel de uh, specifically deals with the idea of a messenger. They are the messengers of God. They were created by God to be the messengers of God. The form of angels, we'll talk about that for a little bit. Uh, boy, you can get into a lot of interesting things when you start talking about the form. I try to be careful about some of the things, some of the pictures that I chose. Uh, it's hard. Uh, uh, we'll talk about that a little bit as we go through. All right. Uh, number one, they were created beings. Uh, God is the only uncreated being. Uh, everything else is created. So we understand that angels were created. That's in Job and Colossians. Colossians chapter 1, 16 and 17 says all things were created by him and for him. Uh, so we know that. Job 38, 4 through 7 talks a little bit about this. Just brings a statement in about the angels there toward the end. Uh, where wast thou when I laid the foundation of the earth to clarify thou hast understanding? Who hath laid the measure thereof if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. See, we're, talk, we're just using this as the idea is they were created. They were created before the heavens and the earth. But they were created of God. So we see them there in Job 38. Uh, we find out that they're, they have the ability to be visible to man. Now that's really uh, elementary. Uh, if they're going to be messengers, they have to be able to be visible. But they're not always visible. They're not always visible. That, that gets us into that whole idea of spiritual warfare. And that's a whole neat subject to discuss and talk about. I've got more questions than I have answers about that, uh, that subject. Uh, but, but it's a neat, uh, a neat discussion. Luke 1, verse 28 and verse 29. The angel came unto her and said, Hell, uh, thou that art highly favored. Talking about the angel coming to Mary. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Uh, when she saw him. She was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salvation this should be. So we know this is an angel of God appearing uh, unto Mary. So there are, they are visible. Number two, they never die. They never die. Uh, we, we have the understanding in Luke chapter 20. Jesus answered and said to them, The children of this world married are given in marriage, but they which shall be uh, accounted worthy to obtain that world and the resurrection from the dead, neither marry nor are given in marriage. Neither can they die any more, for they are equal unto the angels, nor the children of God, being, being uh, the children of the, the resurrection. All right? So they're equal with the angels, and they talk about they, they never die. Uh, there's a fixed number, Now I'm not going to debate what that number is, but if you'll read Hebrews 12 and Daniel chapter 7, uh, you'll find that, that there, a couple of times there's given a, a fixed number, what, one of them, what, 10,000 times 10,000 and uh, it, but there, there's a number there somewhere. I, I can't tell you what it is, but there's a, there's a group of, of angels that are out there. They are subject unto God. They are subject. We could take a lesson from them. Uh, Psalm 103, verse 20, Bless the Lord, ye his angels, 
that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearken unto the voice of, uh, uh, of, of his hearkening unto the voice of his word. Psalm 103, verse 20. They are subject unto the Lord. So what kind of now, now those, that's some basic ideas of angels. Now, that was very was very elementary. We want to talk now a little bit about the types or kinds of angels. Let me ask you a trick question. I warned you. It's a trick question. Got that? Trick question. Mm -hmm. When you see angels uh, depicted, what is the most common? Uh, not, I'm not talking about the Valentine chair thing. I'm talking about angels. What's the most common depiction of angels in our world today? And I'm not saying that right. How, how, what form do they take? They take human form, but more specifically, most angels you're going to see are female. Here, here's your challenge. Look in the Bible and find a female angel. Every time you see an angel that's visible, that reveals himself, it's a him. Why? So then why is it every angel that you ever see portrayed is female? I think Satan's got a little bit to do with that. But anyway, all right, so let's talk about the kinds of angels. The first kind of angel we want to talk about is an archangel. Here's the second trick question. How many archangels in the Bible? Archangel means chief or head or leader. I told you it was a trick question. Anybody care to guess how many archangels are mentioned in Scripture? One. One. Thank you. Now, it is commonly held that there were three, but there is only one that is mentioned by name as an archangel. Anybody know who that was? Somebody said it. Michael. Mentioned, and we'll look at the verse in just a moment. As an archangel, uh, the chief or head or leader, uh, there, there's a, a depiction of what some folks think he might have looked like. I don't know how they got that, but I put a neat picture. I thought I'd throw it in there. Um, Jude, uh, chapter 1, there's only one chapter in the book of Jude. Jude 1 9 says, Yet Michael, the archangel, when continuing with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, does not bring about him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. So, Jude 9, that deals with the idea of the archangel, and it's connected with, with Michael, all right? The next one we want to talk about is Gabriel. Now, most folks believe that Gabriel uh, would be an archangel. I think it fits. God does, you look at the, the, the trinity of God, and you look at how God does things in threes, I, I think it does fit with these three, uh, but we did say that Michael was the only one mentioned as an archangel. Gabriel, which means the hero of God, uh, a lot of folks believe uh, he was an archangel as well. Uh, there's a statue that some folks think. And I, and I put this one on here specifically for a reason. Uh, I thought that was interesting. What's missing uh, on, 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 on Gabriel here that you see on most angels? Wings. Their wings. All right? Now, not every angel had wings. Uh, we'll see that as we go through. But anyway, there's a, a depiction of what some folks think. Gabriel, I don't know who. I don't think that was an eyewitness, but you know, I think that's just somebody. <laughs> and the angels answered and said unto him, I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of God, and am sent to speak unto thee, and to show thee uh, these glad tidings. And that was the Christmas story there, Luke chapter 1, verse 19. So we find Gabriel mentioned as uh, it, there as well. And then the third um, supposed archangel would be Lucifer would be Lucifer. He was, his name, name literally means the shining one. The shining one. The verse of scripture, that, oh, there's, a, there's a, a depiction somebody thought it might, might look like. A, it's, it's interesting. You start reading things about Lucifer. And I, we're, we're going to hit Lucifer very, very lightly because we'll have a whole lesson on him later. All right? So we're going we're to skip that very, very briefly. Uh, but Ezekiel 28 verse 14 says, Thou art the anointed cherub now that's it. That's interesting. The, the cherub. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Uh, just dealing with this idea of, of Lucifer. All right? Um, so the first kind we dealt with were, were archangels. 
Uh, and then there are two other kinds. Uh, you got this one already. I was going to ask you if you could tell me what they were. Uh, the next one is called the cherubim. The cherubim. They are the guardians of God's glory. Now, hopefully you, you, you connected that, but we'll see that in a minute, all right? The cherubims, the guardians of God's glory. Let's see if that... Yeah, the next picture will we'll, we'll clarify that. All right, you ready? Here we go. There it is. All right, remember the cherubim, they're the ones that were on the uh, lid of the Ark of the Covenant. They were over the mercy seat. And what was the significance? That, that's where the glory of God came down there in the tabernacle in the Old Testament. All right? Psalm 80, verse 1, it says, Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, thou that leadest Joseph like a flock, thou that dwellest between the cherubims, shine forth. All right? That dwellest among the cherubims. So we find these uh, angels that were uh, guardians of the glory of God there at the mercy, the mercy seat. And then the final group we have are the seraphim. Uh, the seraphim, and, 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 and most famously, those are mentioned in Isaiah chapter number 6. Isaiah chapter number 6. Now, this next picture is a little more difficult. I, I really couldn't find one that I was happy with, uh, but, you know, but this is the best way I could do, all right? Uh, so when you look at this picture, remind, remember Isaiah chapter 6 said the seraphim had six wings, they flew above the throne of God. They cried out, holy, holy, holy unto the Lord. Uh, but they had six wings. And it says, with twain they covered their face. With twain they covered their feet. Now, I told you I wasn't real happy with that one. It's, I wish they had covered their feet a little better. Uh, and, then with, and with twain they did fly. That, that's what Isaiah chapter, I think I put it in here. Oh, yeah, it is. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 2 and 3. That, that's what the Bible says. That That's what they look like. All right? These are the seraphim, uh, and, and I made the comment that they were the uh, guardians of God's holiness, right? God's glory with the cherubim over the mercy seat, God's holiness as they flew above the throne of God, crying out, holy, 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 all right? So we find these three types of angels, the archangels, the cherubim, the seraphim. Uh, we find that, book now again, We'll get to Lucifer and the fallen angels a couple of lessons down. So we're not going to spend a lot of time on them right now. So what are angels doing today? We've got just a few minutes left. We'll talk about this. And this is where we're going to kind of get into some, uh, we can really get into some speculation. Uh, what are angels doing today? I would hold that angels are doing exactly what they've always been doing. I think we have seraphim that are flying around the throne of God right now crying, holy, holy, holy. Uh, I think we have cherubim that are that are guarding the glory of God. Uh, I, I, and then we have some other things that are going on. I'll give you a couple of thoughts here. Number one, they are praising and adoring the Lord. Uh, and the Bible talks about that when, when a, a person gets saved, born again, that there's great rejoicing. Not specifically by the angels, but it says in the presence of the angels. Now I think they kind of get involved in it and kind of enjoy themselves as well. But I think all those that have gone on before, the saints of God that are there, when another soul is born again, they rejoice in heaven uh, over that. So, but they are praising and they are adoring the Lord today. Number two, uh, they are revealing God's will to mankind. I believe, I still believe that God is still using angels today uh, to dispatch messages, whether it's verbal, I don't know, but whether it's guarding a man of God in Bolivia, I, I, yeah, I mean, the Bible does talk about entertaining angels unawares. It does talk about that. We need to be very careful in what we do. Uh, they are ministering to the saints. I, I believe they are involved in that spiritual warfare that's going on every day. Uh, that we see the demons of God and the saints of God and uh, uh, the, the angels of God and all of that struggle that's going on for the mind of, of, of mankind and, and all the things that are taking place there and we don't have time to get into all that. They are to encourage the children of God. I think they are to help. You remember uh, Christ in the garden, uh, or in the after the uh, after the uh, that's what I'm looking for temptation. Uh, after temptation, uh, after that, that the angels came and ministered unto him. Uh, I think we find today that, that there are still angels that would minister. We may not see them. 
Uh, we may not know they're there, but they're there to encourage us uh, and lift us up. They are celestial spectators. Uh, you read the Revelation, you'll find out that they're just watching and seeing all of this stuff unfold and, and, and would really enjoy getting into some of the things that we, you know, the Bible talks about they'd love to get involved in this idea of redemption. But there is no redemptive plan for angels. Those that have chosen to turn from God, there's no redemption plan for them. And we'll get to them, the fallen angels, uh, a little bit later. Uh, and then uh, we'll get to this last one. Here's a can of worms that I purposely waited until we got 30 seconds left to open. Uh, <laughs> uh, care for the welfare of the believers. Uh, yes, I do think, uh, in a sense, that we do have guardian angels. Um, and I can't explain all that. Uh, I think we do see in scriptures where uh, there, there are some in, uh, indications uh, that there is spiritual help uh, from, from these that care for us. So um, we could get, and we could have gone a lot different direction with angels. And you read books today. I mean, Billy Graham wrote one, and some other folks write things about angels that are just outlandish. Uh, I just want to try to stay with the book, try to stay with the Word of God, and try to stay as close as we can to what the Bible says. Uh, we know angels are the messengers of God. Uh, we know the Bible declares that there's at least one archangel. There are different types of angels. They are working. They are, are, are ministering as God in, uh, uh, commands them. We saw that in Psalm 103. Uh, so what we need to do is just understand the working and the plan of God. Uh, now, I understand that a lot of this is just foundation, and, and we're building, and we're going somewhere. But you're going to need all of this when we start getting in a little deeper. Next week, we're going to pick up with creation. Uh, we're going to start there. Uh, that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, then we'll get in after creation. We'll talk about the fall of Lucifer. And then we'll move into Adam uh, and mankind and, and the dynamic age. And we're just going to go from here and we're going to go through the scriptures. Uh, so I, I hope you'll just bear with me uh, and give us some time to develop this and see it. Um, uh, if you have some questions you'd like to see answered, you'll write them down. I, I, I've said that a couple of times and I haven't had any questions yet. Uh, so if you, if you write them down, we get to that, that place in the scriptures. We'll try to deal with those uh, and talk about them from there. All right, let's pray. Father, we're thankful for the day we enjoy spending to just look into your word. I pray that you'll give us wisdom, help us to understand uh, that that heavenly host is moving and working today. Help us to take lessons from them that we can adore you and praise you and follow you and do what you command. Uh, uplift one another. Father, help us to walk uh, as you would have us to walk. Pray for the services this morning. All things will be done for your honor and your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.